Good evening. How are you? I hope you're well. Well, I'm getting out late, in part because uh, I had to catch up with my work today. Uh, but I didn't uh, find some time to go swimming and so forth. So I'm uh, doubling down a little bit on my, my exercise. Well, when you feel like you can do it, you should do it. That's the way I see it. Thomas Jefferson has uh, said today, uh, as our agent from the history to the present, that the temperature was 79 right now. And uh, it wasn't, it hovered all day at this pleasant temperature. The humidity is about 60, and the winds are traveling at four miles an hour. So, what's there to talk about? Well, it really has to be something or other about the political race. It can't be avoided. There are several, several developments we're thinking about, and I try to use as an organizing principle, I think, what Hillary and Obama uh, mean to where we are today. And it's unfair to pick them out and to exclude others for this conversation. But we, we have just seen it operating, and so we should keep it in mind. Um, in their own way, they made this year possible. But also, so did Jesse Jackson, who helped me win a primary in Northern Virginia, and then I helped him in his presidential race. We walked the uh, precincts in Arlington, and if I can find a picture, I'll, I'll post it. The, uh, uh, I, I know that there are pictures, don't get me wrong. <laughs> we made a big deal of it, and I think it helped me win the primary. But uh, we have both Obama and Hillary in an interesting juxtaposition. We have them competing with each other to determine who will be president in 2008 or to, or to have a chance to run as the nominee, the presidential nominee. And it was very hotly contested and close and it put a person of color in a position of breaking the race barrier. But he was more complicated than that, as most people are. And Hillary was in a position to go and to break through the glass ceiling that barred women. Now, out of this contest, Obama became the winner, and we were excited about it. But Hillary who had been first lady, a senator from New York, uh, became secretary of state. So we have this visible movement forward with the best people in our political constellation to work together and to lead us to even better and more exciting accomplishments. And I think they did. Now, they weren't the, the only ones, of course. Um, the uh, I was involved in uh, 1984 in a congressional race myself, and uh, Jesse Jackson uh, agreed to help me in the primary, which is anathema for some. That is that people would express themselves and choose favorites in a primary. But uh, I had a, a worthy opponent, Harris Miller, whom I liked a great deal, but we disagreed about some basic issues. I was probably more progressive or liberal, and that's good or bad in Virginia, as is the case. But the fact that Jesse came in and walked with me in precincts in South Arlington I think made a difference. And several years later, when Virginia, former Virginia Governor Chuck Robb, pushed for a Southern primary, he incentivized all of us to do better. And I ran into Jesse and I asked him what he was doing. And he said, don't you know? And I said, of course I do. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm not doing anything. He said, well, would you be co-chair of the, the 
Virginia campaign, and I said I would. And a funny thing happened on the way to the 1988 convention in Atlanta. And what it was is that Jesse not only won Virginia, he won a whole bunch of states in the primary. And so, but Jesse couldn't close the deal, didn't have enough delegates. So that's where we were launched. So you have these, you have these membranes of possible advancement going forward. And the ground was shifting uh, to make a favorable footing that ate away at Jim Crow by Jesse and Obama and the glass ceiling by Hillary. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, there are a thousand contributors and activists who have done this, but you and I are just talking on a country road. <laughs> and I'm trying to draw broad strokes as my mind improvises memories from the past, observations I've had that I think knit these things together. So, Kamala was inspired by what she observed and what she suffered and what she fought to change. And when you think about it, uh, there could have been several alternative possible ways that she could have come forward. But instead, we find her taking over the position a vice president with Biden that Biden as vice president had with Obama. So you you have a, a right feeling that we're building from history and experience and responsibility and the people that we care about as leaders are learning and in a position to make a difference for the better. And when I had a picture taken with Ted Kennedy, many years ago, he asked what I'd like him to write to me. And I said, well, the one thing I'd like you to say is that I believe one man could make a difference, because he had, that I would try, that others would. And he wrote a note to his friend, and I think that that's what happens. We talk about networking in this kind of banal way. But what it is, is friending and befriending. It's noticing somebody with some talent and uh, working with them and going forward that way. And so people in politics find themselves on the same side of an issue and on the opposite sides of an issue, and they move forward. Now, this is a very different paradigm than the Republicans. The Republicans have an old world philosophy which is scare the hell out of you, create enemies that are responsible for all the terrible dystopic things that are going to happen, and then go on from there. Now, Kamala gave a fantastic speech last night. It may have been the best of her career. I haven't heard all of them. But I think what happens is you grow in these experiences and ability in the depth of caring, in the proposals that you can bring to make a difference and to make things happen that absent your service, in this case, Kamala, that absent her service, we wouldn't be where we are. Now, some people think, you know, there are movements and that you don't look to people for change. And I don't mean to atomize what politics is about. But I think it's true. One person can make a difference. They might just shout a cheer. They might say something is weird. They might say, when I was a, a kid sitting on a bus, I had this experience. They may say what their mom said to them. These items become part of the corpuscular structure, if you will, of the people that we seek to join with and to follow and to enhance in every way possible without ridiculous exaggeration because who they are and what they've done is enough in and of itself. You know, to choose 
a drive-by <laughs> selection. You know, Tim Waltz gave terrific speeches, but it, it's not his oratory that comes across. It is in his talk, by his actions, who he is becomes transparent. And we see a man who is all the things that some might think are hackneyed expressions, but which are real in him. And that's why we feel confident that he could hold up his end of the bargain as the vice presidential candidate for the Democrats and for the nation. Same thing with Kamala. She last night showed us that she cared. She told us where she came from. She showed us fight. She gave us a glimpse of what she would be as the commander-in-chief in a constructive way, a thoughtful way, a way that would make a difference in the world and would preserve the American values while doing it. That's something. That's important. And that may be the significance of the entire convention that the Democrats had. The speeches weaving with the people in a joyful mood, happier warriors going forward because they see the possibility and it's worth their effort to fight for it, to correct the past and to be ready to go forward in the future. Now Jesse had a, a variety of things he would talk about on the stump and they stay with me and uh, one of them was <laughs> you can't put new wine in old wine bottles and it is actually true that the new wine may actually expand and break the bottle. And that's what we've done in these recent months. However we came to this place, however fraught it was with upsetness and difference, we now have an effort that's at ramming speed and is going to carry us all the way if we do not fail it. That is, we are ready to fight, we get excited in the fight, we stay in the fight, and fight is the word, because there are, of course, going to be elements of this campaign that allow us to embrace new brothers and sisters in this effort. But there are some, and it's not just because they're Republicans, there are some people, including Trump at the apex of this disastrous and historic attack on all the values that are American. But there are others who remember what America is all about. And if there's one thing I can say to you, it is get yourself a flag and plant it in your yard. I mean it. Uh, I'm known in my area for my politics and so forth. And to my surprise, because I didn't think about it, the fact that I, I have an American flag up and I also have uh, a sign for our pairing to become the new president and vice president. But the thing that I hear from people who are Republicans and so forth is they are surprised to see a flag in my yard. Now, I put it up for ages, and I've also put up the police flag when the police were attacked. But I will tell you this. While Trump was president, I would not put up a flag. While Trump was president, I would not say the Pledge of Allegiance. And I have reverted to say the Pledge of Allegiance, but I will not ever until I die. And even then, if there's any consciousness after that, I will not say the words under God in a Pledge of Allegiance. It's just not possible for me. But I will say the Pledge of Allegiance excising those two words. And I will hold the flag and carry it proudly because we are restoring our democracy. We are restoring our country. And when I was listening to the National Anthem, I thought with this convention and the people who are fighting like mad that we really were returning to the words of that song, 
the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're showing some guts. We're showing some fight. And, as Kamala likes to say, when we fight, we win. So let's go win this damn thing. And so I hope to talk to you tomorrow. And I say goodbye to you from my cathedral of trees. All the best. Bye-bye.